black and white camp of barracks and camp with a mountain in the background and an American flag blowing in the breeze with barbed wire fence scrolling from left to right, then 10 camps, 10 stories beyond the barbed wire words. Photo of a flyer in the background with words die in vain on top. A photo of George Fuji with words George Fuji, Colorado River, Poston Relocation Center, Arizona at the bottom. Black background with white letters that says Colorado River War Relocation Center in Poston, Arizona was one of 10 camps established after EO 9066. It operated from June 1, 1942 to October 1945 with nearly 18,000 incarcerates. After the Japanese bombing of Pearl Harbor in 1941, black and white newsreel footage showing the aftermath of the invasion of Pearl Harbor. Japanese Americans were classified as enemy aliens and not allowed to list in the military. George Fuji said, And uh, then all of a sudden you realize now you feel sort of responsible for it. You have a close tie with Japanese, Japan and Japanese people. And I said, oh my God. And then they made a mistake. At the same time, I make a mistake. Black and white video showing notice for EO-9066 being tacked to pole and then soldier walking by Hashimoto Boat Supply Store. That's what happened, see, being Japanese. So you identified really yeah. Japanese. Yeah. And uh, what would they think of me or think of my family? Black and white video showing Japanese Americans being rounded up and placed into cars and placed into buses. First thing, you see. It's a very mixed motion now. I don't know how any uh, Nisei can describe that. Historic color video showing members of the 442nd Infantry Combat Team training and preparing. On February 1st, 1943, President Roosevelt decided to allow Japanese Americans to serve in an entirely Japanese American battalion, the 442nd Infantry Regimental Combat Team. Volunteers chose to fight in the war because they wanted to better the future of the Japanese in America by showing their dedication and loyalty to the country. Far fewer volunteers came from the camps than expected. Military officials instituted the draft for the incarcerates in the camps in December of 1943. George Fuji Black and white photo showing six young Japanese Americans with George Fuji standing on the right highlighted wearing a jacket and tie. Was incarcerated at the Colorado River Relocation Center in Poston, Arizona, where he secretly released. Black and white photo showing War Relocation Authority Poston, Arizona checkpoint with a man walking out the door and trucks to the left, cars to the right. Dispatches from inside the camp and went by the pseudonym the voice of Nisei. Black and white photo showing the barracks at Poston with a mountain range in the background. Believing that Japanese Americans must be treated like citizens. Black and white photo showing a Japanese American family holding a picture of their son in a military uniform in a frame in front of an American flag. Before they were asked to risk their lives in combat, Fuji encouraged incarcerates to resist the draft. Black and white photo showing a roadside sign that says military area number one, zone A prohibited. He learned that he and his fellow incarcerated Japanese American men were required to register for selective service. Black and white photo showing a Japanese American young man spraying a hose on the ground with the barracks in the background. In response, he posted handbills around the camp Picture of a copy of the flyers that George Fuji posted in English. Latrines, discouraging draft age men from cooperating. Picture of the handbill that George Fuji posted with Japanese characters. These handbills basically supported the draft, but took the opportunity to urge the restoration of rights and correction of wrongs done to second generation Japanese Americans. 
Color historic video showing Japanese Americans getting off the train. He said, then the evacuation came and they classified me as a 4C. 4C is an undraftable citizen. I don't know how you would interpret that, but some Japanese took it as a meaning that they were not US citizens. Black and white video showing a soldier and young Japanese American men loading onto a ferry. You were a citizen, but you were undraftable. They didn't tell you the reason why. I figured that I had spent too many years in Japan, so that was the classification they gave me. I wasn't subject to be drafted. Photo of application for leave clearance with questions 27 and 28 highlighted. Yet in Poston, we were asked questions 27 and 28, whether we would defend the United States. I told the truth and answered, yes, yes. I signed the whole thing away. In the first place, anything the government asked me to do, I did it. Color video showing two hands flipping through forms after form in a binder. In the second place, in order for me to protest the government or demand a right to the government, I would have to be a citizen. If you declare yourself a non-citizen, then you have no right to protest. That was my interpretation of the whole matter. Black and white photo of two police officers detaining a young Japanese American man. So I kept my position as a citizen intact so that I could protest the government. Black and white photo of two Japanese American men standing outside of an open jail cell. Then this draft thing came along. I had a bad history as far as the administration or the government was concerned. There were those who said, if they're going to treat us like Japanese, Black and white photo showing three soldiers, one of them sitting at a table with paperwork, talking to a group of young Japanese Americans. Then the hell with serving in the U.S. Army. Black and white photo of soldiers sitting up in a covered truck with Japanese Americans looking on. I told them to take it easy. I calmed them down, but they put me in jail for agitating. On February 21st, 1944, Black and white photo showing jail cells with newspaper article, Fuji held in Sedition Act. 28-year-old George Fuji was arrested and sent to a Phoenix jail to be arraigned for sedition, but ultimately acquitted as the judge's interpretation of the letter was. Front page of the Poston Chronicle with highlighted Fuji acquitted of violating Sedition Act. It does not constitute sedition but merely a protest. George said, Color video showing a bald judge with glasses hitting the gavel on the table with American flag in the background, then courtroom in the background. I think his name was Judge Ling who tried me. His interpretation of the letter was, it does not constitute a sedition, but merely a protest. Newspaper front page of the Rocky Shimpo. So I was acquitted. He said, color video of a Japanese American man in suit and tie speaking before the court. At the same time, I felt that since I had reserved my citizenship, reserved my status as an American citizen, black and white photo showing a large group of Japanese Americans with an American flag in the middle. I would write to protest the draft. So I wrote letters to President Roosevelt black and white photo of a soldier with a pen and paper and a Japanese American young man next to him. Governor Warren, General DeWitt. Black and white photo showing a young Japanese American man writing on a piece of paper. And Mayor Bowron. And being a Kibe, whose English is not good, I suppose I use the phrase, black and white photo showing a large group of Japanese Americans in a hall with a speaker in the front an American flag in the background. Die in vain. Black and white photo showing a group of young Japanese American men walking out of a building carrying bags. If you were drafted without being recognized as a citizen and then were to die, you would have died in vain. Black and white photo showing a group of young Japanese American men sitting on a bus. 
That's how I used the phrase. I still regret having used that expression, but that was a true feeling. Black and white photo of police officers escorting Japanese American men along a fence. So they put me in jail for agitation, for leading an anti-draft plot. Mr. Fuji and others, like him, were willing to defend their country. Black and white photo showing a large group of Japanese American young men sitting before a large wooden table. But not until their basic civil rights had been restored. The federal government not only failed to respond to their demands, photo of legal paperwork with verdict of guilty highlighted, but it also indicted, prosecuted, and convicted them. Black and white photo showing a police officer escorting Japanese American young men. And of course, I still maintain that uh, it's an incident of evacuation. Color video of a soldier with rifle guarding the barracks, then video showing two Japanese Americans leaving the camp with voice of George Fuji on the bottom in white letters. Yeah, it should be forgiven, but uh, it should not be forgotten. And, uh, and uh, this evacuation is to protect Japanese. I, I don't go for it because I didn't, I didn't feel it at all. Um, I don't think this will justify the evacuation, let's put it that way. <laughs> the Seattle Daily Times newspaper with Truman Pardon's 1,523 Draft Act violators highlighted. Black page with white letters credits. Black background with color of National Park Service Arrowhead logo.